good morning good afternoon good evening everyone i hope that all of you are doing well and i hope that all of you are doing great so without wasting any much time let's get started so our today's topic is data science for beginners let's take a look at the agenda today today we will talk about why data science like uh, we are talking about data science nowadays a lot but why we need it what is the need of it so we will learn that today then post that we will talk about what exactly is data science and then we will learn that who is data scientist like what people are uh, responsible uh, who are working in data scientist field what are their roles and responsibilities all such kind of things we are going to learn and then we will learn about uh, how a problem is solved in data science and the data science components what are the different components of data science that we have now let's get started and let's talk about data science so let's just get uh, insights about data science so we have heard a lot that uh, you know everywhere that our data is the crude oil right i mean every company wherever whether it's product based service based for them data is required for every company data is the crude oil for every of the organization we have so we have to basically make sure that every company whether it's a product base or a service base they are taking it seriously like their data basically is being protected their data is being available to all the vendors now what exactly is data science so data science is a process deriving useful insight from data in order to solve the real world problem we have with our data actually because one of the problem is you can have data in various forms you can have data in structured format you can have data in unstructured format how you're going to deal with that data out so that main uh, concern data science which basically helps you is to process your entire different type of data which is driving from different inputs to have a structured output so do you know that we are generating more than 2.5 quintillion bytes of data each day uh, that's a great number guys that's something we are doing every day so this pace of data generation is the reason behind the popularity of high-end technologies like data science ai ml ai means artificial intelligence and machine learning now who is the data scientist guy like what these guys are so your data scientist guy uh, basically are responsible for designing and creating the process and layout for complex and large-scale data set which is used for modeling data mining and research purpose now you are have combination of various things like technical and non-technical technical if i say like for example maths you, know, you can have basically statistics discrete mathematics information theory so uh, based on which you, are, you can write the algorithm and you can basically create the pattern now for the maths now you can have information system your computer science software engineering um, system development you can have uh, basically bi developers data analysis in between and in the businesses you can have economics finance for the virtualization so the combination of all these three uh, basically is your data science so you basically apply the patterns uh, your uh, mathematics theories algorithms permutation combinations your discrete mathematics and uh, the data that you have driven from uh, businesses you combine all the information out and that basically forms a data scientist now, what is the role of data scientists? So, uh, data scientists' uh, primary responsibility is to design and create the process and layouts for complex, large-scale data set which are used for data mining, modeling, and research purposes. You have a couple of uh, responsibilities like selecting features, building, and optimizing classifiers using machine learning techniques. So, data mining uh, basically is one of the unique art because you have to combine all the different uh, technologies in place like we talked about your maths your information system your business you have to combine all the different technologies in place just to uh, create a structured format of our data so the uh, one of the primary responsibility of data scientists is to process clean and verify the integrity of data for analysis now what is integrity integrity basically means that your data is not being tampered now for example if i'm getting data from various sources there is a high possibility that due to high oscillation, noise, sound, due to some other effects, your data can be manipulated. Your data can be changed. So you, you need to have a way uh, with the help of which your data can be efficiently 
optimized. You need to have a way with the help of which your data can be easily managed. That something is the primary role of data scientists, which basically help you to build predictive models using machine learning algorithm. Again, you don't have to be uh, an expert who basically should have the core knowledge in uh, basically uh, in data science. Like you should not be a one who should have a core knowledge in mathematics because I, I get this question a lot of times. People think that I'm not in good in mathematics. Uh, I was very bad in maths and plus I'm not good in numbers. So can I become a data engineer? The answer is yes, you can. The only thing is that you should know that which specific tool you have to use at which specific time. So it's not going to be like that. You are spending a couple of hours just to know about the tool. You just have to know that which specific tool you should use. And here some of the basics are being clear because you have to use the certain algorithms. Now, what the algorithm is, algorithms basically are the set of rules. So you have to basically make sure that you are thorough with that. You, you don't have any kind of uh, like you are not lacking in other words in any of the algorithms. So all these different things, terminology, you should be aware. But it's not like that. You have to go in more detail where you are just trying to learn out the core maths, you are just uh, learning the matrix, derivations, integ uh, integrations, everything. You don't have to, but the expectation here is that uh, your basics would be clear because when you are going to get the opportunity, you have to basically work uh, with different algorithms. Uh, if you are not going to have uh, your basics clear, then in that case, you are going to get a hard time to understand this, like how this algorithm is following, how this algorithm is working. So that is the expectation that your entire basics have to be clear. If you have it clear, then it's basically more than enough for you. So that is basically the major thing you have to use. At the same time, uh, in certain cases, certain roles, because in data science also um, has various sub roles as well. So uh, you have to basically work on uh, machine learning algorithms where you have to build up predictive models. You have to use a supervised, supervised learning. Now, one, what is supervised learning and all, we're going to talk about it in a moment today here. Now, talking about how a problem basically solved in data science. Let's take a look on that and get the fair understanding. So the problem solving in data science basically has the entire life cycle, which consists of six steps. You start with discovery, then you move on to data preparation, you move on model planning, then model building, then operationalize, uh, then you are going to move on to communication results. So this is the entire life cycle that you have. Now, let's just understand and get the fair understanding about each and every phase. However, I want to inform you one thing that every phase in itself is a different word. Now, if I will start going in detail about each and every phase, uh, every phase basically is in itself is a different word. Now, here in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to pick up one phase and I'm just going to give you the glimpse of it. Starting with, with the, the first way that we have is discovery. As the name suggests, what we do. So in the case of discovery, discovery involves acquiring data from all the identified internal and external sources that can help answer the business question. This data could be like you are getting a loss from the web servers. Data can be like you are getting some social media data of your customers. This data can be data uh, which is retrieved from different uh, systems via the API. So it can be in various forms. Like this is a small example, you know, let's say doctor gets this data from the medical history of the patient. We have different attributes here and these are the abbreviations that we have created. So let's say NPREG means that number, number of times pregnant. Glucose means plasma glucose concentration. BP means blood pressure. Skin means triceps skin fold thickness. Your BMI basically means body mass index. Your PED means diabetes pedigree function. Age means the age, what is your age, and income means income. So income is an irrelevant attribute in the prediction of diabetes. We will require, of course, all these attributes if we want to predict for diabetes, but income is not that uh, dependent factor. Now we are going to make our system uh, self-efficient that once we are going to you know, bring any patient in front of the system, we are going to connect our devices, it should be able to make a smart decision. So that's the reason we basically, uh, you know, use. Now, once that data is being discovered, we have identified our attributes, everything. Then post that we are going to move on with data preparation. So the data can have a lot of inconsistencies. Like here in this case, the data has been derived from various sources. Now, but one of the biggest problem is that since this is derived from different sources, there is a high probability that 
data can not be accurate maybe like uh, data was copied from a different source which is not being accurate or there were some inconsistencies wherein it is going to make your entire output inconsistent so the data can have a lot of inconsistencies like missing values blank column abrupt values incorrect data format which needs to be cleaned up so in the case of data preparation phase this is required to explore pre-process and conditions data prior to the modeling which will help you to spot the outliners and establish the relationship between the variable now just showing you a glimpse of it you know right now here in this case entire income is red now this income which is in red uh, you know again it's not a mandatory attribute but still this is blank now you see it, this is again some example of inconsistent data here in this case if you see uh, the red in color it's blank the bmi cannot be blank of any human being likewise glucose is blank it cannot be blank now and preg which is number of times pregnant it has to be uh, either zero or one two it had be it has to be in a numeric field not integers this is an in integer data type so which should not be allowed this is bp bp of the any person should cannot be in, uh, you know thousand so it's wrong so this is the inconsistent data that we have now what we're going to do is we are going to fix those inconsistencies out now if you see the next figure we have fixed those inconsistencies you remember in the last figure what we found the number o and e the variable was basically written in the wrong data type now here it's an integer value now glucose is in uh, the correct range not in thousands bp is also right the fields which are blank got filled up and at the same time our income was not the mandatory attribute so we have taken it off now this is the consistent data that we have prepared in data preparation phase once that is done then we are going to move on and we will do the model planning so in this phase we determine the methods and techniques to draw the relationship between variable so we are going to apply explanatory data analytics using various statistical model formulas and visualization tool just to show you a glimpse of it this is going to be a way it looks like so we are going to use visualization techniques like histograms line graph box plots to get a fair idea of the distribution of data now in this case you see number of trans pregnant is basically in uh, this format glucose it's basically in a graphical format so having said that if we are going to have the data it, it will be easy for us to understand now suppose that like this is again a small uh, you know demonstration this is a decision based tree um, you know based on the different attributes so different attributes that we are going to have next is operationalized so basically it defines uh, or basically deliver final reports briefing code and technical documents wherein you are going to implement pilot uh, project in a real time production environment and last you're going to have the communicate result where you're going to deliver final reports briefing code and technical documents you're going to look for performance constraints if there are going to be any now talking about structured learning at rebecca if you are highly interested to take the course from us uh, you want to learn technology end to end in detail then in the very first class you are going to learn about the you know the basics how uh, the introduction with the practical hands-on in the next class you're going to learn about sequence and file operation with the practical hands-on in the next class you're going to learn about deep dive function object-oriented programming inheritance modules error exceptions with with the uh, practical hands-on then in the next class you will learn about introduction to numpy pandas with the practical hands-on in the next class you will learn about data manipulation with the practical hands-on in the next class you will learn about introduction to machine learning with python with the hands-on in the seventh class you will learn about supervised learning phase one with the hands-on then in the next class you will learn about dim dimensionality reduction with the hands-on in the next class you will learn about unsupervised learning with the hands-on in the last class you will learn about reinforcement learning with the hands-on now talking about how to choose algorithms in data science like how we can so we can have three types of algorithms supervised learning reinforcement learning and unsupervised learning now what is supervised learning supervised learning is a type of machine learning algorithm which uses a known data set like the training data set to make the predictions like for example say you are a teacher and your way uh, way of teaching is um, you know like the way you are teaching it like something you have the known data and based on which you can program the system out the next is unsupervised learning unsupervised learning is a type of machine learning used to draw interferences from data set consisting of input data without label responses for example when your kids are taking decision out of their own understanding this type of learning would be unsupervised learning and last is reinforcement learning so reinforcement uh, learning is an area of machine learning inspired by behavior uh, psychology concerned with how software agents can take decisions like for example if a new situation comes up the kid will take action on his own 
that is from his past experience but as a parent towards the end of an action you can tell whether uh, he did good or not okay guys thank you for joining this today's webinar it's an immense pleasure to meet all of you and uh, thank you for your uh, taking the time and wishing you a great day ahead